Hi to y'all. My name is Justin Ramirez and I'm a nutrition consultant with Blue Bonnet Feeds. And today we're going to be discussing least cost formulation uh, versus locked formulas. So what is a least cost formulation? Well, least cost formulations allow manufacturers to adjust the formula. Uh, so switch out, sub out any ingredients based on commodity costs. Now, the formula is going to be changed, but it's still going to be meeting that guaranteed analysis. So it's going to tag out the same. And what that means is you'll still see, you know, 12% protein, 8% crude fat, uh, but they are going to be coming from different ingredients. So you can have uh, new sources of crude protein and crude fat. Uh, and, and one thing to note is crude protein. In reality, it is just a uh, mathematical equation relative to the amount of nitrogen available in the ingredients. And we'll touch a little bit more on that in the upcoming slides. So as the market commodity prices change, the formula is then subject to change. Now, this is going to be based on the manufacturer's discretion, whether they would like to do it monthly, uh, whether they would like to do it weekly and sometimes even daily. Now, the feed formulation software is then gonna be incorporating this uh, new pricing into its calculations, and then the nutritionist is going to calculate, uh, or excuse me, formulate this new product. Uh, nutritionist is then going to check for any uh, errors on inclusion rates, any regulatory rates on medications, and then rebalance if needed. Now, what this does is it gives, it, it gives you a more consistent cost, but this gives you a less consistent product uh, because with least cost formulations, the primary goal is cost. Now, look at this as a circle starting from up here on your commodity cost. Now, as you follow this circle, this wheel, Again, this can happen monthly, weekly, even daily. This circle takes place um, within the manufacturer. Now, how do they work? Well, visually, this is a good chart that, that gives you an understanding. So let's start up here on the top left uh, with these green boxes. So as we look at stocks, availability, nutrients, composition, ingredient pricing, so all of these are gonna funnel into what are the ingredients. Now, coming back, you look at availability. In this case, if you have, let's say, corn that all of a sudden gets really expensive, the manufacturer can then go and purchase another protein source, uh, such as oats or, or barley, uh, depending on what they're looking for. Um, that falls into your availability and this comes into your ingredients. So that's why these arrows can go back and forth because what we have available and what we have uh, on ingredient pricing uh, is subject to change. Now, as we look over here on the far right in these blue boxes, you have feeding standards and your mins and maxes. Well, those are gonna be based on the nutritionist and what his or her formula specs are gonna be. So you see this as your formula, again, your 12% crude protein, 8% crude fat, uh, so on and so forth. And these formula specs, again, can change back and forth depending on any type of adjustments that the manufacturer would like to make for the nutritionist. So this comes down onto your balancing. So if everything looks fine, then that goes as an optimized formula. However, if there are any discrepancies, uh, it will come back to formula verification here on the right in this yellow box. Now, I'll pause for a moment to share a personal real world scenario that played out where a client of mine, a racehorse client was on our product, everything was going well, and, and a competitive company came in and said, we can give you a similar product, but we're going to lock you in uh, for this price for uh, this amount of time. Now, what ended up happening is the formula 
uh, over a month or so ended up looking different than what they initially started. Now in this scenario, this would come in here as a formula verification and gets kicked down onto if it needs to be re rebalanced because let's say that that feed was manufactured and it wasn't where their agreement on price was, well, then it's gonna get rebalanced to a point where the manufacturer determines that they need to meet a certain price. Well, now you can see a real world scenario play out in a lease cost formulation where they can tweak the formula, adjust it to make it even more cost efficient uh, depending on the, the situation or the scenario. Now, if everything checks out fine, then it comes back as an optimized formula. Then it comes down to feed manufacturers, so the mill will then go ahead and manufacture the feed. And, and then the last step is quality control. Now, some companies will look at this and take uh, samples of it uh, from the finished product and determine if the formula needs any adjustments. Um, and make sure they are putting a product out there that they are comfortable representing their brand. So what do we do expect with a locked uh, lease cost formula? Well, given that there's a change in incorporated ingredients in the diet, this can affect the horse. An example of this is let's say you are using soybean meal in the formula and then it gets substituted for cottonseed meal. Well, soybean meal and cottonseed meal both have a similar crude protein level in your low to mid 40%. However, they have a different amino acid composition. So what that means is there's less natural amino acids in cottonseed meal relative to soybean meal. So if the formula is guaranteeing it, then more synthetics are gonna be used to meet those requirements. But that's again, if, if they are guaranteed on the guaranteed analysis and where you generally find that is underneath crude protein is where you're generally gonna have amino acids. Now, this is a necessity on the ruminant side and, and it's not as big of a change uh, for a least cost formula on the ruminant side because they have a different digestive tract. Cattle and, and all ruminants are able to utilize um, more so the nitrogen that is in the ingredients to then convert their own amino acids. Whereas again, different digestive tract, horses aren't capable of doing that. Horses are gonna rely more so what is in the diet to then have that desired effect. So other things that can happen with a least cost formula are changes in pellet color. So again, if you're substituting one ingredient for another, uh, depending on how much is in there, it can change what that pellet looks for. Uh, now grain appearance. So going back to the example I gave on the previous slide with my real world scenario, this is where the uh, trainer saw that there was a difference in the feed itself because it didn't look like what he had normally been uh, buying and, and what he had agreed upon. So this gentleman went to his local feed store, bought the same uh, thing, the same feed that he thought he was, was getting, and it looked totally different from what he was on. Now, again, there was a difference in price because what he had negotiated uh, was a lot less than what the price was at the store. So that's where that least cost formulation can, you know, change the grain appearance of, of what you're accustomed to. Allergies are also another uh, symptom that can pop up based on different ingredients. Palatability is always subject to change. Horses are known to be picky. And if you change an ingredient, they might not like the way it smells. They might not like the way it tastes. One of the big things about a least cost formulation is that you can get some temporary digestive upset. 
So when you have new ingredients, you are susceptible to changing the non-structural carbohydrate levels. Uh, that stands for basically your starches and sugars that are in the diet. So if you look at a tag and you see uh, starch and sugar to get the total NSC, non-structural carbohydrate level, you have to add the starch and the sugar together to get your total NSC level. Now, an example of this could be, let's say soybean oil, vegetable oil uh, prices go up. Well, that formula might then use more uh, grain to add into the diet to meet that fat percentage, uh, depending on what it is that they're trying to accomplish. But what ends up being the result is you could have a larger, a higher starch and sugar percent that you might see uh, down the road. So how do we identify least cost? Well, collective terms are going to be uh, the first way to identify it. And by using uh, this example here on the right, uh, you look at your ingredients and you see grain products, processed grain byproducts. What those are, are termed is collective terms, or another way of putting it is an umbrella term. Now, what that means is you could have grain products listed here, but examples of them could be corn, oats, barley. Those could be used in this grain products uh, interchangeably up and down, and, and you wouldn't know the difference whether there was more corn, less oats, more barley, in this grain products, and that formula can change again as, as much as once a day. Now, looking at roughage products, well, us horse owners know that there's a huge difference between beet pulp and ground straw. Now, I'm sure there are more of you out there that are uh, supplementing with beet pulp than ground straw. Uh, there is a difference between the two, but when you throw them into collective terms, uh, they can be inter interchangeably used in a roughage product, and you wouldn't know the difference. Now, I went ahead and circled uh, animal fat and hydrolyzed vegetable oil here uh, because those are going to be two very high fat sources that, looking at this ingredient, uh, guaranteed analysis, we're wanting to have a minimum of two and a half percent fat in this formula. Well, if these grain products, plant protein products, and so on don't tag out with two and a half percent fat, well, these ingredients are then going to be used to then meet that requirement. So again, as these form these ingredients up here change, these can then be used. Uh, in different amounts to then help that formula tag out to two and a half percent fat. So what that does is it gives you inconsistency in your product because if let's say one of these ingredients has a certain smell to it or a certain taste to it, well that's going to affect these top two, taste and smell. Again, we can affect the color into it. Uh, I alluded to animal performance on the previous slide where let's say you start getting more starches and sugars in the diet, well, that starch and sugar is going to increase the amount of sugar in the blood where that horse is then going to be a little bit more on the muscle, so to speak. They're gonna be a little bit, quote unquote, hotter, where the horses are getting that surge in sugar and they are responding in some ways where racehorse owners like it. And let's say if you're you know, more in a, a different discipline, such as reining, you want more of a controlled energy, not necessarily coming from starches and sugars. So animal performance can be affected from least cost because you're not necessarily sure where your protein is coming from, where your fat is coming from, uh, depending on the formula that again can change monthly, weekly, even daily. So on the flip side, what is a locked formula? 
Well, to simply put it, it's a formula that does not change. Now, there can be differences within ingredients, but not necessarily the formula. And what that means is there can be differences from where the ingredients are sourced, such as, let's say, alfalfa that can be purchased from Arizona versus Utah versus New Mexico. But some manufacturers will take this locked formula mindset to another level and actually source those ingredients from the same place. Let's say they want to purchase the same alfalfa from the same uh, manufacturer from the same place to add that level of consistency in the product. So that adds to where there's not as many differences in the ingredients and there's certainly not a difference in the formula. So this is an example of one of the Blue Bonnet Feeds Intensify products that is a locked formula. And we'll touch a little bit on this here in a second, but given that this formula is an open label, you can see these ingredients for their true names. So looking at this tag on the right, you see dehydrated alfalfa meal, wheat mids, rice bran, those you see them for their true name, so you know that it's going to be the same formula with those same ingredients. What this gives you is a more consistent product with a consistency in color, smell, taste. Again, these are the same ingredients incorporated in this formula where pellet integrity is one of the biggest pet peeves that I've had clients bring up that this, when they get to the end of the bag, it's pretty much dust. Well, if you have a locked formula, you can understand early on what are some of the ingredients that add to pellet integrity, keep them in there, and make sure you have a consistent product. Again, we alluded to earlier the NSC levels. Well, if you have a locked formula, you can put on the label that this feed itself, again, using this uh, feed tag on the right, the starch is 10%. The sugar is 5%. So again, to make sure we get our total NSC levels, we add the starch and sugar. So this feed has 15% starch and sugar total, 15% total NSC level. So if you are someone that wants to be at a certain percent of starch and sugar, well, you can use a locked formula as a tool to then be more mindful of how much starch and sugar is in your feed that way you can then focus on your forage and the amount of starch and sugar that's relative to it. Now where this plays a big role is if you have a horse with special needs such as laminitis, Cushing, or Founder, well now you can be a lot more mindful and a lot more aware of where your starches and sugars are coming from, but also that it's going to be consistent uh, monthly and daily. So you can expect your product performance because now, uh, contrary to a least cost formula, well, now you can lean on the guaranteed analysis and say, in this example, I'm getting a 12% protein. Well, now I know I'm getting it consistently from these sources. So now I know that I have the same amino acid profile. Now I know that this formula is going to have a consistent amino acid profile where I can expect my horse to perform a certain way based on what the guaranteed analysis is letting me know. A locked formula really helps the manufacturer focus more on the nutrition uh, because the nutritionist, at the end of the day, the nutritionist has handpicked these ingredients because nutritionists take pride in, in these formulas that these are products that have a goal in mind, have a goal where this is a feed that's gonna be more performance, this is a feed that's gonna be more for mare and foal. So the nutritionist has handpicked these ingredients for, for his or her needs to get this formula to perform a certain way because a lot of nutritionists wanna make sure there's preventative care built onto this formula and they wanna make sure that it's in a formula that is locked so that way it's providing that consistent preventative care on a daily basis. So how do we identify a locked formula? 
Well, to simply put it, an open label is, is going to be one of the easiest ways to identify whether it is a locked formula uh, because you are going to see those ingredients labeled for their true names. But, I repeat, but an open label does not indicate a locked formula. Manufacturers now are, are realizing that horse owners want to know, you know, where their feed is coming from, what, it, what is actually built into the formula, what are the sources, how can we avoid allergies, how can we avoid certain things, and by doing that, you can see what, what those ingredients really are. So manufacturers have really honed in to that mindset that people want to know what is in it, so they're opening the, the uh, label to where you can see it, but again, those ingredients can interchangeably be used. So as an absolute, you're going to want to check with the manufacturer if that formula is locked. Uh, that is the only way to really and fully know if it's going to be a locked formula. Another way of identifying is, is simply just consisti consistency from bag to bag. You know, we, we talked about it where color, smell, taste can change with the ingredients. So if you have a more consistent consistency from bag to bag, it's going to give you a lot more comfort knowing that it, it's more than likely a locked formula. Uh, pellet integrity, less fines, we uh, talked about that earlier as well. And of course, visually, so what does the feed look like? You know, is there more grain, less grain, more pellets, less pellets? All of those can really tell you visually if it's going to be more of a locked formula. But again, you're going to have to check with the manufacturer to ultimately know if, if that is a locked formula. Uh, and using this Omega Force tag again, uh, an open label will let you know this, the ingredients. Um, relative to what is in the guaranteed analysis. So in summary, with a locked formula, you're getting a more consistent and reliable product. And at the end of the day, it's gonna be one less thing for you to worry about in your equine program. Uh, we already have enough worries as it is, so having a locked formula really helps uh, keep your mind on other more important things that have a much higher variability such as forage because in a locked formula the primary goal is the nutrition uh, that formula is locked so that way that uh, nutrition that is in the formula can be driven into the animal to anticipate and expect certain results but you're in luck so all blue bonnet feeds equine formulas are locked so again using this omega force uh, tag here on the right lets you know that this is going to be again an open label but now you have a uh, are aware that this formula itself this guaranteed analysis and where the protein comes from these are going to be sources that are not going to change now what this does is it gives you confidence in making recommendations for you know let's say you're a trainer and you're making recommendations for your clients or Let's say you're just a horse owner and you want to make decisions on, you know, what should I buy and, and, you know, do I need to have any supplements? Well, by having a consistent product, you're aware that those amino acid profiles are going to be consistent. So if you're comfortable, if you like the way your horse is performing, then there's no need to make any changes unless you want to have some preventative care. Again, this is going to be one less thing to worry about in regards to product performance. So I'm sure there's been a time where you open the bag, it doesn't look the way you like, and now you're a little frustrated that you have to go and swap it out. Uh, if you're like myself and you live 15 to 20 minutes from town, uh, it's not as easy to throw every uh, bag back in the uh, truck and go back into town or go through the process of looking through the bags and find out what uh, looks good. Again, the palatability. So if the horse doesn't like it, well, now you can be more comfortable that this is the same product. So if they like it now, they're more than likely going to like it down the road. Uh, and of course, reputation. You know, we all want our horses to look great. We want to be at that jackpot. We want to be at that 
a competition where somebody comes in and says, man, I really like the way your horses look because we take pride in our animals. You know, we, we want them to look good, but more importantly, we want them to feel good. And, and that's why I say that we take pride in our products so that you can take pride in your horses. Um, by locking the formula again, you're adding more consistency to not necessarily just the product, but your overall program where there's more consistency to really put your mind on other more important things that if you do run a business, uh, there's a lot of things floating around. And the last thing you want to worry about is, you know, how the feed's going to look. Is, is it going to be something I'm going to have to return? I uh, had an issue before. Let me look at it. These are things that uh, don't have to worry about. And it makes it so much easier. So how, do you, how can you stay connected with us? Well, you can stay connected with Blue Bonnet on bluebonnetfeeds.com. Uh, there are weekly webinars that are put on by Dr. Jimmy Nichols uh, and Dr. Bill Vandergriff. Uh, Dr. Jimmy Nichols has also put together a podcast, and here's a picture of what it looks like. Uh, Feed Room Chemist, an equine nutrition podcast. I've listened to several of them, and they are really, really good nutritional-based information that makes uh, you a better uh, nutrition expert on what you're putting into your horses uh, and again you can sign up for a free nutrition consult on bluebonnetfeeds.com and with that if there are any questions feel free to uh, send them over to our website and again uh, thank you for your business we certainly appreciate it